Hey everybody, this is Jenny. Welcome to my channel, Unhidden Heroines. This specific video I am making for women who want to travel, who want to take an adventure by themselves. Maybe you're already in Colombia or you want to go to Colombia, or maybe you're in your home country thinking about what kind of rogue adventure to have in Colombia. Maybe you're scared to travel alone. Maybe you're used to traveling alone and you're looking for a radical adventure. And so I consider myself a guidepost for doing this journey so that you have some points of interest and points of reference. So let me tell you, I was in Harding, Colombia. I have been traveling alone for five years. I left the United States uh, five years ago on a one-way ticket. I had been in this blissful coffee village of Hardeen where I had spent much of my time. And I had been there, gosh, I've spent probably a year and a half total in that village. And I was there for about five months in a little studio apartment. And I was focusing on my writing, teaching English, working on my YouTube channel projects. I was just like, I just felt like it was time to be out of my comfort zone. So I decided to leave there and I went to Medellin to see a couple of my longtime friends. I I knew that I wanted to go to Brazil. I wanted to be out of my comfort zone. I wanted to be with a new language, a new culture, new food, new scenery, new everything. And I wanted to have a rogue adventure on my way there. I thought it's so boring to pay 500 bucks for a flight to Medellin to Rio de Janeiro. That's the easy way. <laughs> Why would I go the easy way? And so I started doing some research online on YouTube and on Google, and I discovered that it's possible to go through the jungle. Um, so I'm going to explain to you that I went from Medellin to Leticia, Colombia, which Leticia, Colombia is the southernmost village in Colombia, and it's in the Amazon jungle. I wanted to see new things on my way out, you know, my and I thrive on adventures. I want to share with you the hostel that I chose because when I was looking for a hostel that was close by the main part of the town, it was going to be considerably more expensive than to choose a simple hostel that was just a little further away. And so I chose one called Hotel Dupin House. And I'm not mentioning them because I get a commission off of it. I'm just saying this is the path that I took. And I chose them because I liked their pictures, but mostly they didn't have any reviews. And in the past, I would not have chosen someplace that doesn't have reviews. But I thought, you know, as a business owner and as a published author, like, like I thrive on people leaving reviews for other people to know what value they are getting in exchange for my book, in exchange for my leggings, my clothing line, etc. And so I thought I would love to give them a try so that I can leave a detailed review to help them get more travelers. So other travelers will know what they are going to get in exchange for the value of what they pay. It was crazy. I got off the airport. So I flew from Medellin to Leticia. Man, the colds are even just getting out. The indigenous influence, the, the climate. And it was so funny because my taxi it was wonderful to see the view out of my window from my taxi and how people live like in the jungle like in jungle town amazon river life river culture he takes me in and out weaves in and out through these little you know uh, river neighborhoods and then he stops at the end of this road and he's like okay well, your hostel's down that road and around that corner. You just follow the signs to get there because it had rained. And so there was water standing in all these roads. It was just funny because I was like, okay, he wouldn't drive down there. I had to get out and carry my bags all the way down this road and then all the way and follow the signs to find my hostel. And I do want to share with you, the hostel was an absolutely wonderful experience. There's no AC and it is hot. And thank God I had my bug spray because um, at night, right after I would get out of the shower, I would throw myself, I would just lay on my bed naked with my fan on me. And then the first night, I, all of a sudden, my whole body was on fire. And I was like, oh my freaking God, the mosquitoes. I immediately got up and got my bug spray and put it on every nook and cranny of my body. And then laid there naked like, oh. So yeah, make sure you've got your bug spray. It was so safe for a female traveler. I was welcomed. They were polite. I met other guests that were there. And also, one of the wonderful selling points of this hostel was, is the rooftop. I'm a rooftop junkie. And also for the price of their night, which I think at that time was 60,000 pesos per night, which at the time with the conversion rate was like maybe 14 or $15, but that could change. So don't bank on that. The price of breakfast, I think was 8,000. It's a little bit extra for the breakfast that they offer from 6.30 a.m. to I think 9 a.m. And I would wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning and go to the rooftop. They did have free coffee available in the reception. So I could just help myself to coffee, go to the rooftop and just have my quiet quiet alone time and I'd watch the sun come up over the Amazon jungle. Oh, it was incredible, the experience. Um, and then their breakfast also was delightful. The young woman that took care of me that morning, I was the first one awake. And so she went up there to get stuff ready and I was the first one to get fresh breakfast and just enjoy quiet watching the sun come up over the Amazon jungle, listening to the parrots, listening to the birds, listening to wildlife. She was the one that mentioned, hey, while you've been here, because my mindset was I'm just gonna get there, spend a day and then figure out how to get to Brazil on a boat 
to go across the Amazon River, which was the whole point that I had gone to Letitia was to take a boat across the Amazon River, right? I meant to mention that in the beginning of my video. I'm sorry. I'm a natural free talker. I don't script things. She said, oh, don't just jet out of here in one day. She said, you have to go see a place called Isla de los Micos. Wow. She gave a rec that recommendation. I didn't know what that was. I looked it up online and it was an island where you can go see monkeys. And I know that's really super touristy, but it, I love monkeys and I have, I have only ever seen them through the glass at the zoo or on videos of Discovery Channel, right? And I thought, oh my God, I can see real life. And I wanted to see something with local culture besides just exploring the village. So at that point, I went ahead. I knew I needed to check out passport issue because keep in mind, I was going to go from Colombia to Brazil and I really did not understand where I needed to get what stamped because every place is different and every country is different. So this is the information that is really important for you. So I figured out the only place in Letitia to get your exit stamp out of Colombia is the immigration office that is at the airport and let me tell you they sometimes have an officer there and they sometimes do not have an officer there they do not have a set schedule it's island or it's river life culture at it's very much its own pace so here's what I discovered they're going to tell you that if you get your passport your exit stamp out of Colombia you have 24 hours to leave Colombia. Okay, got my exit stamp out of Colombia. And then I was thinking, well, if I want to spend a full day or two days here to go do tours or to go explore, I don't know how to plan. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do an experiment and just see how this works out. And that's why I want to give you this gift. I thought I'm just going to go ahead and get my stamp out of Colombia because you cannot get your entry stamp into Brazil until you get your exit stamp out of Colombia. That's another thing I learned. Got my exit stamp out of Colombia from the immigration office at the airport. From there, I went to the immigration office on the Brazil side. A taxi will take you. It's like $2 for a taxi. You can just say Emigracio in Brazil. And they'll take you. And the Brazilian guy was like, okay, so, you know, when are you headed into Brazil? And I, at first I was like, um, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. He's like, okay, well you have 24 hours. Okay. So they had told me 24 hours. Brazil had told me 24 hours. He had also asked me what my point of destination where I was going was. Well, I was going to take a boat from uh, across the Amazon river from Letitia to Manaus, Brazil. Thank God. I had already been doing research about hostels in Manaus ahead of time to kind of see what prices were there, to see what the available options were. And I had taken a screenshot of one of the hostels I had been looking at. So thank God I thought on my feet and I was like, oh, it's this hostel. Even though I didn't have a reservation there, but he didn't know that. He didn't have time to look all that up. He was like, oh, okay. And he's like, okay, well, if I give you a stamp now, you need to take this trip tomorrow. Guys, it was my first day in Letitia. And I just said, okay. I told the immigration officers in Colombia, okay. I told the Brazil guy and the immigration Grace office. Okay, I have 24 hours, but really what I was going to do is what I wanted to do. Nobody was going to investigate what the hell I was doing. I got my passport stamps taken care of, and I'm going to say to you, I also recommend that you do the same. If you know you're going to make the voyage across the river, that first day that you get there, get your passport stamps taken care of because then you're not messing around with last minute stuff when, oh shit, I left this for last minute. An officer's not there. I don't know when someone's going to show up. I need a stamp in order to do this. I have a ticket already bought. Don't mess with all that. Go ahead and get your stamps taken care of the first day and then you're free to do what you want to do. Whether you stay for a day or two or three. Um, I ended up staying for two more days. So that way I had that, those things taken care of. So then the rest of that first day I could go explore the village. Let me tell you, incredible. Um, I found a little place where I could have um, vegetarian rice and the chef came out, sat with me. I visited with him in Spanish. Almost everyone there speaks both Spanish and Portuguese. Um, also, I walked from Leticia. It was a three mile walk. I wanted to um, get footage for YouTube shorts and stuff like that and just see local culture, how people sell things in the market, what their marketplaces look like. Guys, it was incredible. The river life, being able to watch people walk up with their fish that they were in a canoe on the Amazon River fishing for, selling it right there on the side of the banks of the river, fresh fruits and vegetables, handmade goods and items. It was unlike any experience I've had in Colombia and I have been a lot of places in Colombia. I've spent over two years there. So I got to experience that the rest of the day and I went, I went to, I thought, okay, well, <laughs> tomorrow I really want to spend a full day going on a tour and I'm on a tight budget. I don't have a whole lot of money to work with, but I want to see something before I leave. And so I took that girl's advice and I was like, okay, my point of reference is Isla de los Micos. I want to see monkeys. Oh my God. It was incredible. I went to, um, I found a tourist agency. I went to three different ones and they were trying to sell me some bullshit. And I was like, okay, I'm not spending a hundred dollars for one day for one person to go do X, Y, and Z. Okay. That's, you're bullshitting me. So I, I thought to myself, I'm going to look for one more. And if it's within the range of my budget, 
and they offer what I want, then I'll go ahead and take an excursion tomorrow all day to go see. I wanted to see indigenous culture. I wanted to see the monkeys. The last one I went to, they had exactly what I was looking for. So let me tell you, I don't remember the name of it, but if you were walking down one of the main streets heading towards the river, there's a road that runs along the river. Take a left and there's a tourist agency and it's the last one at the end of that street. It's on the left. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but they have really economic excursions. Oh my word. Um, it was 150,000 pesos for me to be on a boat full of people. It was like 20 or 25 other people, which also was a wonderful experience. Um, they were all Colombian. We got on a boat. We got to walk down the riverbanks. We walked across a bridge across the river. We got to walk through these indigenous communities and see how these houses are built on top of stilts for when the river rises and see how they live and how they hang their kayaks and lower them and get them on the water to go fish and sell to make their few bucks for a day to survive. You know, it was like, it was just like, wow, it'll impact you, you know, like, wow. We got on a boat um, and then from there, they took us out to where we could see dolphins. And just to think, hey, they said to the left of us ahead is Peru. To the right of way up ahead is Brazil. What's behind us is Colombia. I was like, oh my God, like I'm looking at, I'm right here and all the energy that was there was just also incredible. So we went to go see the dolphins, which I did see. I did not get good footage of that, but I saw dolphins in the Amazon River. The driver of the boat let me sit up on the front of the boat. So I literally was sitting up there with all the wind blowing in my face and smelling in the smells of the river, watching local people kayak. The most impressive thing is when we got to Isla de los Micos. Oh my word. I had monkeys all over me. It was one of the most joyous experiences so far on a trip to connect with an animal. And I know it's touristy, but it was something that I've always wanted to do. And I was able to do it in a way that was economic for me. These monkeys were all over me. I got wonderful footage of that. And gosh, I made a connection with the guide. And how cool is it that that guide does that for a living and he lives on the island. I mean, I felt such a magical connection to this little island. And I thought, God, I would love to live here. <laughs> just be by myself and live naked in the jungle with monkeys and be simple and connect with mother nature. I mean, it was a very powerful experience. I know I was supposed to experience that. From there, we went to another bank on the, another part of the river that um, it was called Macedonia, which is an, um, an indigenous tribe. I can't remember at this moment what language they speak. I can't remember at this minute, but um, we got to see tribal dances um, for someone's birthday. And then I was talking to the little kids about their uh, traditions and like their names. We practiced some English and they taught me some words and colors and numbers in their indigenous language. And then, and, then the, and I know that was touristy as well, but it was still an experience. It was a wonderful experience. And then they offered me a temporary tattoo, which is normally not something that I would do, but I really wanted permission from indigenous culture um, and their grace with Mother Earth, Pachamama. I'm gonna cry because it was so personal. I really wanted their permission to cross the Amazon River and I wanted divine protection. And so I let them put um, an indigenous symbol on my wrist that was symbolic of protection from Pachamama. Oh, this experience, I'm reliving it as I tell it. So uh, we left there and we went to another port that was called Puerto. Oh my goodness. I don't remember the name of the port. I can't not remember this. I will remember, it will definitely be in the comments. Okay, but we went to this other, and this is me being imperfect. <laughs> so this next place also was something that you must see. We had a lunch, which was included in the tour all as a big group of people, fresh food, buffet style. They were serving fish. I really despise fish and seafood. And so I told them I was a vegetarian and I got beans instead. I got beans and rice and vegetables and some yucca food. And then they wanted to stay there and talk and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm going to go explore. I think it was called Puerto Naranja. I was on foot and I had two hours to just hike it and go all over and just walk and get to know. And I found a lookout tower. I climbed up to that. I got to eat coconut ice cream. And then I got to the shore earlier than the group and I got to see dolphins again, sitting there watching the sun kind of start to go down. It was kind of at dusk and I was just watching dolphins hop in and out of the river. I did not get great footage of it, but I saw it. I did get little glimpses. So from there, we went back to shore and I will tell you, I cannot imagine having missed that experience. I cannot. At that moment, I knew I had done what I was supposed to do. I felt completion in that place. And so I knew it was time I was going to leave the very next morning super early to go catch a boat to start my journey across the Amazon River. I went to, let me tell you also, it was Sunday on that day and currency exchange places that are in Letitia at the main port, they all close at noon. It was Sunday. So I was like, whoa. And I leave tomorrow at 6 a.m. to go catch my boats. So I was like, where am I going to get my currency exchange from Colombian pesos to Brazilian reales? That's when 
I found out that if you go to the border, which is a Brazilian town on the border, is called Tapatinga. You don't have to have, to have a passport to get. You could walk there. And that's what I did to see street food and markets and all that stuff. There is at that border, and it's like, I think 5,000 pesos, like a dollar for a taxi to get there. They have a currency exchange place that is open every single day until 10 p.m. So that's another gift I give to you. Um, I went there to go get my currency exchanged, got to my hostel, did my packing, took my last shower. The next morning I was up at 4 a.m. Let me tell you, I went to the boat, the port in Brazil. So it's supposed to be a 30 hour boat ride on a speedboat. They have different options. They have a seven day option. They have a four day option. I didn't want to be off of Wi-Fi for that long. I didn't want to be, I didn't have, I don't want to be disconnected from Wi-Fi because I run online businesses and was like holidays, but I still wanted the experience. And so, and it's a little more expensive. I want to say it was 900 reales. It was 910 reales, which is like $280 USD to take that 30 hour speedboat to get on the boat and that was a perfect amount of time. The boat was extremely comfortable. The staff was very polite. I met wonderful people. There was a lady on deck and we got that price uh, included three meals, that full stretch. Imagine we left at 8 a.m. and we got to Manaus, Brazil at 6 p.m. the next day. And that included three meals that first day. Plus they have self-serve coffee, self-serve hot chocolate, and they also have like a big jar of crackers. So if you get hungry and want a snack or you want coffee, all of that is included and distilled water. Wow, people are speaking in Portuguese. There's Brazilians here. There's Colombians here. Some of them are bilingual. Some of them are speaking what they call Portunol, which is like a mix between Portuguese and Spanish. There was a way for me to get out on the back of the boat anytime I wanted. And I could just smoke a cigarette. I could be with the air and I could watch local culture. I saw petroleum fill-up stations on the river. It's river life and boat life. Twice we got pulled over by um, federal agents because narco traffic is um, prevalent because the river is a mode of transportation. So you've got all those narco with traffickers are wanting to get their product from the jungle, the coca paste and also finished product and kilos to get to Brazil to sell the tourists in Rio and stuff like that. And so you have to keep that in mind. That's South America. That's life in South America. You're not ever going to get around that unless you live in a palace in a gated community and you never leave. And even those properties are probably laundered money from narco traffic. Okay. That's just reality in South America. I had my first experience with Brazilian food. That lady was so sweet. I used my translator to... <laughs> They don't have vegetarian options. You're going to get meat and rice and spaghetti, lots of carbs. The meat was beef. It was all good. Um, and then this ground up root, I can't remember the name of it in Portuguese, but they eat it with everything. I didn't really like it, but other people love it. It's a part of the culture. So that was pretty much it. And then we got to um, we got to the port at 6 p.m. the next day. I made it to Manaus. From there, I took a taxi to the hotel. Now my experience beyond that is a whole different YouTube video. Holy freaking language difference and cultural change and out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Stay tuned for more videos, but I really wanted to share this with you. If you are a female trying to travel alone and trying to have an extravagant trip or some kind of rogue adventure, you can do it. I went to the jungle in Letitia by myself. You already know now there's a hostel that you can stay at where you're safe, where you're welcome. Absolutely cannot miss Letitia if you're in Colombia for a long haul and you're trying to figure out if you've got three months of travel or something, you must go. Even if you're not going to cross to Brazil, you cannot miss that. At least go for two or three days as a little weekend trip if you're an expat in a bigger city. You must see it. It is incredible. The experience across the Amazon River, it was incredible. It changed me. That's my gift to you. Now you know about the passport stuff. If you're trying to make the crossover, you know what to expect on the 30 hour boat. You know how much it costs. There's other options as well. Um, I really recommend you getting your passport stuff done that first day. Nobody asked me after that point. Nobody said, well, once you get your passport or have you been staying? Has it been 24 hours? Nobody knows. Just say, oh, yeah, I'm gonna leave right now. Tell them both that, nobody knows. Do what you do. Let your heart guide you. And that's my gift to you. I, I just say, let your heart lead you. Let your heart lead the way. Don't live your life in fear. It's okay to feel those fears. Face them. Fears are where buried treasure lies. Um, so let those fears come up. Feel them. Lean into them and what they're trying to tell you. You go with those beautiful experiences because they will give you treasures that will be yours forever. And that's my gift to you. And also, like I said, I've been doing this for five years um, in six different countries. And I am now starting my new adventure in Brazil. If you're interested in hearing more about why I left the United States five years ago on a one-way ticket, my journey has been about facing my fears. I'd always dreamt of traveling. When I was 20 years old, I survived a violent, I survived a kidnapping and a violent sexual assault in small town Oklahoma. I tell my journey in my memoir. I launched my memoir when the pandemic hit and it was time to write my story. And I got out there to start traveling after years of battling addiction and cycles. I was like, I started getting help and started conquering my fears one by one and stepping into my power until I finally had 
had the courage to buy that one-way ticket and pursue the life of my dreams. And I've been doing that now for over five years. If I can do it, you can do it. You can face absolutely anything. You can face your fears. You can conquer absolutely anything. And I'll start with believing that you are worthy of doing so. And if you would like to check out my book, it did win an award in Europe this year. Um, the link to check it out is in the comments below. And um, I do have 69 reviews on Amazon if you want to see what other readers are saying. Um, it is currently impacting the lives of women in seven countries. So I'm going to leave you with that. I love you. Get out there. Live your life. No one can do you like you. I hope this information has provided value. If you feel like it did, I would love for you to subscribe. Help me become monetized. It's going to empower me to live the life of my dreams. Okay. I love you guys. Love and light. And I will be back.